In the Tang Dynasty, be careful of Shang Xiufang, beware of Shi Feishuan, refuse Song Yuji, and resist Shi Qingxian. As for the demonic witch, I initially refused. Later on, I discovered that, how fragrant. Keywords of the novel Time travel starts from the Tang Dynasty Double Dragons without pop-ups, time travel starts from the Tang Dynasty Double Dragons, download the complete text, time travel starts from the Tang Dynasty Double Dragons, and read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Opening of the Great Curtain You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Opening of the Great Curtain Tianxiu, Big Deal is Not Going to Happen Xiaoling, Xiaozhong has caused a big trouble and is now being chased by the people of Yuan sect. If we don't help quickly, they might be chopped into thin meat by the people of Yuan sect tomorrow. A skinny, skilled, with agile eyes and a cunning appearance, rushed into the room of the Bamboo Flower Gang's Wind Bamboo Hall. His face was full of nervousness, appearing very anxious and uneasy. All right, Xingrong, don't worry. I already know about this. These two unlucky people must have stolen something deadly, otherwise they wouldn't have faced such a big battle in the city. On a who stool in the room, there was a handsome young man who was around 18 or 19 years old, over 8 feet tall, dressed in a light blue robe, with a hint of helplessness in his eyes. He waved and gestured for Xingrong to sit down, allowing him to calm down and speak slowly. Brother Chu's expectations are not bad. I have sent someone to inquire about the news, and it seems that these two bastards have stolen some treasure from Yuan sect. After the news leaked, Yuan sect quickly blocked Yangzhou city and began to send people to pursue them. Fortunately, these two bastards were clever and managed to hide, but were not caught by Yuan sect. After Xingrong sat down, his mind calmed down a lot. After recalling the news he had just inquired about through some official channels in the dark, he spoke out all of this information in one go. All right, at this point, even if these two bastards cause a lot of trouble, we'll have to wait until later. The most important thing now is how to take action to save their lives. Chu Tianxiu waved her hand and pondered. He didn't show it on his face, but he actually felt a bit uneasy. Others didn't know what Ko Zhong, Su Xiling and the others were stealing. How could he not know? He has been coveting the Taoist treasure, eternal life technique, for quite some time. After Chu Tianxiu traveled to this world, he quickly learned that the time point at that time was in the sixth year of day, and the emperor was Yang Guang of Sui. Originally, Chu Tianxiu thought that the current era was the end of the Sui dynasty, but he soon found out that there was actually a martial arts world outside the great Sui dynasty, and the recognized strongest in the world were the three great masters Ning Daoqi. Fu Kalen, and Bai Xian. From then on, he knew that this was the world of the twin dragons of the Tang dynasty depicted by Huang Yi. He came to this world earlier than the timeline of the original plot, about six years ago. At that time, the world could barely be considered a peaceful holiday. Although the core of Ae was a bit heavy, the border was also a bit turbulent, and there were two major troubles. Turkic and Goguryeo. However, the overall environment in the central plains was still stable. However, although the world was stable at that time, Chu Tianxiu's background was a bit too bad, just like the protagonists Ko Zhong and Su Xiling in the original work, who were beggars and orphans. Start with a bowl, the rest will have to be played by oneself. This opening is simply hellish difficulty. If it weren't for Chu Tianxiu's early acquaintance with Xingrong and Gui Xiliang, and then through their relationship, he would have formed an orphan gang with Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and more than ten orphans, forming a group to keep warm. He was afraid he wouldn't have been able to endure the first two years. Later on, due to his good luck and sufficient skills, he finally gained the appreciation of Shen Bei Tang, the head of the Wind Bamboo Hall of the Bamboo Flower Gang, with his acting skills and abilities. At the age of thirteen, he began to worship him as his teacher and became his disciple who closed the door. He practiced his unique mental technique, wind and bamboo strength, and his life just became easier. Because he has had enough of the hardships, he is very persistent about strength. Five years ago, 
he had actually set his sights on the eternal life technique that would have been stolen by Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, changing the fate of these two thugs and becoming the true Yangzhou twin dragons. Unfortunately, the information Chu Tianxiu knew was too crude to fully determine the specific time node, number of days, and month of the incident. He could not always send someone to specifically monitor these two of his childhood friends. Moreover, he has been plagued by important matters recently, and as a result, he has been caught off guard with the eternal life technique. Those two unlucky ghosts definitely didn't die, they probably escaped along the underground canal of Yangzhou City. But now that the Yuan sect has set up a trap inside and outside Yangzhou City, it's not easy to save their lives. Compared to Xingrong, sitting next to Gui Xiliang had more knowledge and a smarter mind. He naturally knew the importance of it and couldn't help but show a bitter smile on his face. So, big brother. What should we do? Can we save the two of them? Xiaoling and Xiaozhong, although they don't want to join our bamboo flower gang, they are still our friends at least. We have to help them. Xingrong also understood this, but due to past friendship, he couldn't help but speak up. To save is definitely to save. As long as we save them before they are discovered by the Yuan sect, we will send them to Lingnan and ask them to give the precious item of Lao Shitsi to the Song sect leader of the Lingnan Song family. Then their small lives will be almost saved. Although Chu Tianxiu felt a bit depressed in her heart, it didn't delay her thoughts. A good solution, the Song family in Lingnan has always been at odds with the Yuan clique, and they must want to see that Yuan transform and embarrass themselves, so they will definitely be involved. If Xiaoling and Xiaozhong are lucky, they may still be able to make a living with this. Gui Xiliang's eyes lit up and he breathed a sigh of relief in his heart. Gui Xiliang, Ko Zhong, and Su Xiling are both orphans who grew up together. They have a bare-bottom childhood friendship and are very close to each other. If it weren't for Ko Zhong, Su Xiling wouldn't have been able to forcibly lift Gui Xiliang to the position of the leader of the Bamboo Flower Gang after their own success. However, what the two of them didn't know was that Chu Tianxiu's proposal was indeed the most likely way to save their lives, but it was essentially meaningless. If Ko Zhong and Su Xiling are really weak and in danger, they will die tomorrow, then Chu Tianxiu will definitely help. Even if Ko Zhong and Su Xiling were too ambitious and disobeyed Chu Tianxiu's control, their relationship with these two brothers had become a bit distant, but it was not to the point of facing death and falling into the pit. Even if Chu Tianxiu really succeeded in intercepting the Hu halfway, he would only skim through the eternal life technique and print a copy, which would not cut off their chance. Today's Chu Tianxiu is neither a villain nor a hero. He is just an ordinary person walking towards the peak, and his character has not yet reached the level of ruthlessness and righteousness, prioritizing all interests. The key issue is that the two brothers now seem to be facing numerous risks and difficulties, as if they are about to be chopped into meat in the next second. But in reality, the situation that these runaway brothers really face is that golden scales are not things in the pool, they turn into dragons when encountering wind and clouds. Don't think you can still be Shaoling now, Xiao Zhong shouted, there's no need to take them seriously. After this calamity, the next time we meet, Chu Tianxiu may have to call them Captain Ko and Su Jinren. After all, these two bastards are no longer reliable, they are also the true protagonists of this world. End of this chapter Chapter 2 De Yi Long Fang Zhe. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 De Yi Long Fang Zhe It's really hard to say about luck. Since Chu Tianxiu came to this world and became a 13-year-old orphan beggar, he has been constantly striving for survival and strength, spending at least six hours a day practicing martial arts. After six years of hard work, Chu Tianxiu almost forged himself into an ascetic monk. With just a little chance and luck, he barely became a first-class martial arts expert. However, Due to his limited background, he can still be considered a top figure in a conventional martial arts force like the Bamboo Flower Gang. But if it's better than that, Shifei Xian, a proud son of heaven like Dugu Feng, would be much worse. 
Ko Zhong, those two bastards Su Xiling just got an opportunity and played tricks. First pursued by the Yuan sect, then calculated by the Haisha gang and Jukuan gang, and then went through several life and death battles, almost losing his life several times, becoming a first dot class expert in the martial arts world. Later on, these two brothers were pursued and killed dozens of times by various forces, almost becoming enemies of major forces such as Buddhism, demons, Taoism, and sections. Chased again by Wagong Fortress, chased by Wang Shichong, chased by Duga sect, chased by Yin Kue sect, chased by Shijishuan, chased by the four great holy monks, and made countless life and death attempts to become a great master, uh, a blessing in disguise is a blessing in disguise. After recalling the tragic blessings that their two brothers would suffer in the future, Chu Tianxiu's heart was quite balanced. All right, Xingrong. You'll bring Chu Ren and Chu Xian out of the city quietly in a moment. If you can't find them, that's it. If you find them, don't make a fuss. Someone will quietly tell me, and I will send someone to take them to Lingnan, it's likely that he won't be able to find it, but at least he has to work hard and make a gesture to avoid making the people below mistake him for a cold-blooded person who is afraid of power and selfish. Now, he is ultimately a person from the martial arts world. As the leader of the gang, he must pay attention to loyalty. Otherwise, if the hearts of the people below become cold and dispersed, it will be difficult to lead the team. Xingrong quickly nodded and said yes, seeming to want to start immediately. On the contrary, Gui Xiliang, who had the best relationship with him on the side, hesitated for a moment before asking in a low voice. Chu Ren, Chu Xian has always been clever and has good martial arts skills. It would be appropriate to send the two of them. But if we only send a few of them, wouldn't we send a few more people? Yangzhou city is too big, and it may be difficult to act with fewer people. There are quite a few people under my command, and if it were for another matter, hundreds of people could be dispatched to take action. But could this kind of confrontation with the court be done with great fanfare? I am not afraid of the Yuan sect, but how many of the old bones above us are not afraid? Don't end up with us not being saved, but instead getting caught up in ourselves after reaching out and patting Gui Xiliang's shoulder, Chu Tianxiu said somewhat helplessly. What we can do now is to do our best and know our destiny. The Bamboo Flower Gang, where Chu Tianxiu is located, is one of the eight and ten sects in the world. Although it cannot compare to the powerful forces of Buddhism, demonic sects, and Taoist sects that can influence the rise and fall of a dynasty, at least in this Yangzhou region, it can be considered a leading major gang. Therefore, although he is only a fragrance master under the jurisdiction of the Wind Bamboo Hall in the Bamboo Flower Gang, he has a considerable number of available manpower. He has about 500 people and horses under the Xianko in Yangzhou, governing the business of five streets in Yangzhou, including Fish Street, Yanglu Street, and Jiching Street. His influence is even stronger than that of the Tongluan shoulder in the movie. But he has many subordinates, but most of the gang members are just Jianghu people who follow the rules of the Bamboo Flower Gang and obey his commands. There are not many people who are loyal to him, belonging to the category of those who can be trusted or not. Under his command, there were not many confidants who could completely sacrifice everything for him, violate the orders of the gang leader, and even oppose the current emperor. Even if they were fully calculated, they were actually less than twenty people. Except for Gui Xiliang and Xingrong, the two little brothers who used to ask for food with Chu Tianxiu, steal things together, and sneak through the bottom of the bamboo flower gang, the others were all orphans who had no father or mother, were beggars or thieves, and had been raised by him since childhood. They all started as children and were nurtured by him for three or four years, little by little like trusted disciples. According to his adoption order, they were given the surname Chu and named, benevolent, righteous, courteous, wise, trustworthy, gentle, respectful, frugal, loyal, filial, brave, humble, and honest. Among these brothers, Chu Ren, Chu Yi, Chu Xian, Chu Wen, Chu Liang, Chu Gong, Chu Jian, Chu Rang, Chu Yong, and nine others all have the talent to practice martial arts. 
Therefore, Chu Tianxiu taught them martial arts three years ago and appointed them as some small leaders in the Bamboo Flower Gang to exercise their abilities. Among these disciples, Chu Ren and Chu Xian have the best talent, and they are now considered second-rate experts in the martial arts world. If it weren't for Chu Tianxiu's suppression, they would probably have been able to serve as helmsmen and hall leaders in gangs like the Eight Gang and Ten Association. As for the remaining Chu Li, Chu Ji, Chu Zhong, Chu Qian, Chu Xiao, and Chu Lian, they all had no talent for martial arts. Therefore, he instructed Chu Li, Chu Ji, Chu Zhong, and Chu Qian to study literature, while Chu Lian and Chu Xiao studied medicine, giving them all a personal skill. These fifteen brothers, besides the thick back sword in his hand, were the biggest capital that Chu Tianxiu had in his hands. Gui Xiliang's mind is very intelligent, otherwise he would not have been able to seize the position of leader of the Bamboo Flower Gang in the original plot, and develop the Bamboo Flower Gang into an unprecedented behemoth in the future. After Chu Tianxiu gave a few words of advice, he immediately understood that this matter could not be made public, otherwise the helmsman, hall leader, and gang leader who were pressing on their heads would consider the overall situation and directly hand over Ko Zhong and Su Xiling. He nodded repeatedly and said. Big brother, you're right. It's not appropriate to make a big fuss about this matter. It's just right for the three of us to go together. The matter was settled like this. After Xingrong left with Chu Ren and Chu Xian, Gui Xiliang quickly turned around and said goodbye, leaving only Chu Tianxiu in the room. For some reason, Chu Tianxiu suddenly smiled and took a bottle of Shangxi Fenjiu from one of the wine cabinets. She poured it into a porcelain cup and drank it all in one gulp. In today's world, even if one has already stood on a volcano, as long as Emperor Yang of Sui does not die, the pattern of the central plains will not be chaotic. The world will still be completely solidified by class power, with the upper class being born noble and enjoying all the glory, while the lower class can only compete internally and cannot leave no matter what. But now that the story has reached its beginning, Ko Zhong and Su Xiling stole the eternal life technique and truly stepped onto the stage of the world's martial arts world, embarking on their escape journey. The present dot day central plains may also become completely chaotic. De Yi Long Fang Zhe, Zhong Yuan Lu Zheng Fei. Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, these two troublemakers, have a chance and will soon enter the world's chess game. Then I should also make a move and settle in this world's chess game. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Practice at the bottom of the river. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Practice at the bottom of the river The red sun is in the sky, and it is also the time of the rising tide of the Yangtze River. In the Yangtze River waterway, which resembles a long dragon for thousands of miles, the surging tide rushes towards the riverbank like millions of hooves hitting the ground at the same time, fully proving the infinite power of nature. But at this moment, there happened to be a person standing in the tide of the river, walking against the waves, vigorously waving the thick back knife in his hand, and drinking profusely in his mouth. 1. After spitting out a number, he slashed straight towards the direction of the river, as if he was about to strike against the river and kill the thousands of miles of Yangtze River. 7. 20.9362. The person who practices swordsmanship in this foolish and stubborn way is naturally not someone else, but Chu Tianxiu himself. It is not easy for ordinary people to move in the water, let alone wave their swords in the tide. However, Chu Tianxiu ignored it and firmly pricked his heels, grabbing the rocks at the bottom of the river with his sauls. With full force, he swung his large sword in his hand and slashed at the wave that rolled over like a small mountain. At this moment, he was like the old man fighting against the sea in the raging waves, wholeheartedly following the Yangtze River to fight against each other, as if facing a life and death enemy. The tide of the river surged one wave after another, and Chu Tianxiu in the seawater swung his knife until the number in his mouth became 621. His true energy had completely run out, and his face turned pale like a golden paper. He finally gave up and stumbled on the rocks at the bottom of the river, walking slowly, 
struggling all the way to the shore. Tired, exhausted to the extreme. But he still had no intention of sitting down and resting. He casually inserted his thick back knife into the beach, took off the clean clothes he had prepared when he came from a nearby rock, and used them to change his wet clothes. After that, he stood up straight, imprinted his hands, closed his eyes, and practiced chi. He followed the path of his own internal cultivation and began to practice diligently. This is not that Chu Tianxiu doesn't want to rest or has a hobby of self-abuse, but rather that he learned from the details in the original work and the inner cultivation tips recounted by the sword master Ba Fenghan. When internal experts are exhausted and exhausted, they should avoid lying down to sleep. They must use their supreme willpower to concentrate and persevere. This is the key to improving their martial arts skills. He practiced for 15 minutes in this state, even stronger than the effect of the previous day's cultivation in his usual state. Just such a trick to practice martial arts greatly increased Chu Tianxiu's efficiency, surpassing more than 90% of ordinary people in the martial arts world. Chu Tianxiu's cultivation of wind and bamboo energy can be considered as Shen Beitang's unique martial arts. This internal mental skill is not really good, it cannot be called a divine skill or secret skill, it can only be said to be mediocre second or third rate martial arts. No matter how high the seniority of Shen Beitang in the Bamboo Flower Gang is, he is only an ordinary hall master under the jurisdiction of the Bamboo Flower Gang, and naturally does not have the top dot notch and extraordinary divine skill secrets in his hands. This book, Wind and Bamboo Power, is not only inferior to the four great books such as The Longevity Code, but also to the unique martial arts such as Dugu Sword Technique and Ice Xian Power, passed down by the disciples of the Four Great Gate Sect, which are ranked on the list of unique martial arts. It is truly not worth it. If there are any advantages to this type of mental technique, it only triumphs in being moderate and peaceful, with a long dot lasting qi flow. However, Despite the difference in his martial arts skills, Chu Tianxiu was still very grateful to his master from the bottom of his heart. If it weren't for the guidance and guidance of his master, then even if he had been wandering in the martial arts world for 10 or 20 years, he might not have had the edge of any inner martial arts. In ancient times, any specialized craft was known as the Iron Rice Bowl. Ordinary people could have a lifetime of worry-free food and clothing after receiving an inheritance, and even pass it on to their descendants. Therefore, the supervision was extremely strict, with various rules of all sizes, even passed down from the inside to the outside, and from the male to the female. The internal mental technique, which can truly bring power, has strict rules and regulations, and it is truly boundless. If you are unlucky and encounter a cunning master, you may have been taught for a lifetime, only some flower fists and embroidered legs, without any real knowledge. Master, master, behind the master, there really exists a father character. Chu Tianxiu must remember this kind of genuine virtue of preaching and receiving education for a lifetime. Where would she complain? To a large extent, the reason why Chu Tianxiu was able to tolerate the foolish elders and upper-class members of the Bamboo Flower Gang and did not have the intention of defecting to the gang was largely due to the existence of his own master. Poverty leads to change. Chu Tianxiu knew that if she practiced step by step, she would probably have to be like her own master, who had practiced for most of her life, but still had the worst cultivation among the main leaders of the Bamboo Flower Sect, and would not have achieved much. In his mind, the two of them, Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, in the original plot, used the power of a waterfall to cultivate their swordsmanship, as well as the example of Yang Guo, the great hero of the divine sculpture, who fought in the sea for three years to hone his swordsmanship. So after achieving a small success in internal skills, he would fight against waves in the river every day to hone his internal skills and swordsmanship. As for the effect to be serious, this cultivation effect is not as good as imagined, and it cannot be considered the top cultivation secret method, but it is also not considered poor. He jumped into the Yangtze River for the first time at the age of 14 and spent a full five years chopping it every day. To this day, he is indeed incomparable to Shi Feishuan, and even the legitimate descendants of the four major sects, such as Wan Wan, 
who is a proud son of heaven. But it only took him five years to catch up with his masters over forty years of hard work, and he gained fame in the bamboo flower sect with his skillful anti-tide knife technique, becoming the star of the future in this bamboo flower hall. Otherwise, he would not have been able to qualify as an incense lord within the bamboo flower gang, where the situation of seniority is very serious, with only a few years of effort. Unfortunately, when manpower is exhausted, only one day when he suddenly realizes and expresses himself, elevating his martial arts to a higher level, can he forcefully break through to the level of a master and become a truly top-notch expert in the world. Otherwise, in Chu Tianxiu's martial arts, with no advanced techniques, no famous teachers to teach, and no great opportunities to practice, being able to reach this level of martial arts is already at a bottleneck, almost reaching its peak. If it were an ordinary person, perhaps one could be satisfied and enjoy wealth and prosperity, but for him, it is not worth mentioning. Otherwise, he would not have known that Lao Shitsi's eternal life technique was actually an authentic Taoist secret art, with extremely high requirements for his character, which was completely unsuitable for ambitious people like him. He could not have wasted his hard-earned internal power to cultivate the eternal life technique and still had an extremely hot eye for it. There is no way, in today's world, there are indeed divine skill secrets like Dao Xian Zhong Mo de Fa, War God Illustrated Record, and Huang Tian de Fa, that make people climb to the sky step by step, as well as supreme treasures like He Sure Bai, and Evil Emperor's Relic, that make people transform themselves. But these things are either directly owned or can be seen but not touched, and they are not things that Chu Tianxiu can directly hold. The feudal lords in the temple do not allow those below to stand out, and today the martial arts world is characterized by a complete solidification of classes and a complete monopoly of resources. The people in the bottom of the martial arts world can only compete internally and can never achieve true class crossing. Fortunately, although the pattern of the martial arts world has been completely solidified, the overall pattern of the world is going to be chaotic. In the Great Sui Dynasty, which ruled everything, and was about to collapse, even if it was Buddhism's benevolent navigation in quiet study, meditation hall, six sects of devil sect, the top giants in the Jianghu, could only leave one after another and drift with the tide. No matter how powerful a martial arts expert is, the power of the martial arts world cannot be defeated by a strong army and strong horses. And this is also the opportunity for Chu Tianxiu, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Lingnan Song Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Lingnan Song Family, Ha, huh, Shu Tan After practicing internal skills in place for three hours, Chu Tianxiu finally let out a long breath of white air, stopped the cycle of his own martial arts, and let out a comfortable shout. The bold and unrestrained voice shook freely in the Yangtze River, creating ripples on the surface of the river. Brother Chu, the orders in the gang have come down. From now on, you will be the helmsman of the Jiangyin branch of the Bamboo Flower Gang. Our plan can finally begin. After waiting for Chu Tianxiu to complete his cultivation in the river, Gue Xiliang, who was standing on the shore, quickly approached him and handed over his dry clothes, speaking excitedly. A month ago, Ren Xiaoming, the leader of the Iron Cavalry Society, who was tied with the Bamboo Flower Gang as one of the eight gangs and ten factions, seemed to have been inspired by the recent rise of anti sui rebel forces and began to annex various gangs in Jinling and Wuxi with a more brazen attitude. Despite their extraordinary strength, the Bamboo Flower Gang was not given enough attention by Ren Xiaoming, causing a serious blow to its Jiangyin branch in Suzhou. Not only have territories been severely lost in various regions, but Zheng Baiwei, the former helmsman under the Wind Bamboo Hall, died inexplicably, leaving a vacant position. To be serious, the reason why Chu Tianxiu missed out on the longevity technique is largely because he has devoted almost all his current energy to this matter. The decline of the Great Sui Dynasty is now inevitable, and it cannot last for three to five years. He must plan ahead and fight for a strong position in the future chaos of the world. Chu Tianxiu naturally did not want to continue staying at the headquarters of the Bamboo Flower Gang in Yangzhou. 
In this wasteful time, he was restrained and suppressed by the helmsmen, hall masters, strategists, gang leaders, and various father.in.law and mother.in.law of the headquarters. He planned to go out and find a true foundation. Jiangyin County is located at the head of the Yangtze River and the throat of the Yangtze River. Since ancient times, it has been a fortress for defense and a battleground for soldiers. Chu Tianxiu successfully obtained this crucial helmsman, and naturally, based on the power of the gang, he could infiltrate his own black hands into the entire Jiangyin County. If everything goes smoothly, then he can continue to radiate his influence to Wu County and spy on the surrounding Kuaiji and Yuhang counties. If at that time, even if it cannot be called the foundation of a king's hegemony, it will still be a feudal system. Awakening to control the world, lying drunk on the knees of a beautiful woman. This temptation is something that no man can resist. In today's martial arts world in the world, with complete solidification, whether Chu Tianxiu wants to advance in martial arts or break through in power, he will quickly reach the ceiling that ordinary martial artists will inevitably face. If he wants to break through his own level, he must strive to grab and seize. Undoubtedly, with his current foundation, seeking opportunities to become a rebel army and embarking on the path of the wild dragon and snake is undoubtedly the fastest and most effective means. In the past few years, when Chu Tianxiu taught fifteen of them benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, trustworthiness, gentleness, humility, loyalty, filial piety, bravery, frugality, and integrity, he also taught Gui Xiliang and fortunately allowed them to teach one. When teaching, out of selfishness, he occasionally revealed to them the idea that the world is about to be in chaos, and it is the place where heroes can be used. Gui Xiliang knew Chu Tianxiu's thoughts and naturally understood the crucial role of the position of the helmsman in Jiangyin County. Huh, after procrastinating for so long, I finally came to an end. It's not in vain for me to wait in Yangzhou for so long. I'm afraid the road ahead will be much easier. After hearing these words, Chu Tianxiu naturally felt very happy in her heart. The little depression that had arisen in her heart due to the eternal life technique finally dissipated completely. Although the longevity technique is good, it is actually not very practical. For the current Chu Tianxiu, the position of the Jiangyin branch helmsman of the Bamboo Flower Gang is actually more important. The Bamboo Flower Gang can be listed as one of the eight gang in ten association, and is a well-known presence throughout the world, naturally not to be underestimated. If we compare it with the powerful forces such as Buddhism, demonic sects, and Taoist sects that can intervene in the struggle for power among feudal lords and influence the rise and fall of the world, it is indeed nothing. But if our focus is limited to Yangzhou, it can definitely be considered a leading local power. On the territory of various counties around Jiangdu County in Yangzhou, where the four halls and twelve rudders of the Bamboo Flower Gang are stationed. Hall lords and helmsmen from various regions can not only collect protection fees on the streets they control, but also engage in various types of business through all means, including coercion and plunder. Banks, pawn shops, restaurants, rice mills, distilleries, oil mills, inns, gambling shops, private salt shops all profitable businesses, the Bamboo Flower Gang will be involved and weave a huge network with local officials, officials, and wealthy families. This is actually an extremely helpless situation in the world today. The situation is similar across the country, with Zhuhua Gang in Jiangdu County, Bailing Gang in Bailing, Haisha Gang in Yuhang, Jijiabeo in Shu, and other regions. Because of the strength and influence of these gangs, when Emperor Yang of Sui was killed and the world was in chaos, the gangs in these areas could easily attack cities and seize territories, becoming feudal lords. This is also known as local power. The most despised existence among emperors throughout history. If a new person goes to Jiangyin County to serve as the helmsman, it would at most be to create an additional local emperor who would act recklessly. But if it were Chu Tianxiu, it would be like a fish leaping in the vast sea and a bird flying in the high sky. Hey, Brother Chu, Xingrong, Chu Ren, and Chu Xian have been searching outside Yangzhou for half a month, 
but they still haven't been able to find the footprints of Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and the others. Why don't we let them come back? Let's go to Jiangyin County next. It's a time of shortage and we can't do without a few of them after some thought, Gui Xiliang spoke up. It has to be said that the escape skills of Ko Zhong and Su Xiling are truly unparalleled. As expected by Chu Tianxiu, Gui Xiliang, Chu Ren, and Chu Xian surrounded Yangzhou for half a month, but in the end, they could only return without success. Furthermore, the Taoist secret book, Eternal Life Technique, is completely isolated from Chu Tianxiu. Okay, let them come back. We local local snakes can't find them, let alone you and sex Jianglong. Those two bastards shouldn't be in any danger to their lives. Anyway, let's not look for them. Let's call the three of them back. Chu Tianxiu nodded and answered. The longevity code is completely gone, which is indeed a pity. But fate is always like this, losing it means losing it. Even if Chu Tianxiu really obtains the longevity technique, unless he is severely injured one day and his internal skill cultivation is ruined, he will never waste his internal power for recultivation, just to fight for a chance that is even less than one in a thousand. Since Chu Tianxiu was 13 years old, his inner cultivation, which was not yet strong, has become his greatest guarantee that he can live peacefully in this world and not fall into the lowly days of stealing and begging from wild beasts. No matter what, he could not bear to lose his internal skills and fall into a state of losing strength. Even if he could obtain the eternal life technique, it was probably just an additional decoration in his hand. After all, he never likes gambling, but rather the type of gambling with a winning rate of less than 1 in 10,000. Brother Chu, there's actually one more thing. Didn't you ask me to inquire about the footsteps of Song Gongzi, a warlord of Song? I have heard the news that Song Valve and his team have arrived in Yangzhou yesterday. The eldest son of Song, Song Shirdao, is currently resting inside the Tianxian Tower, accompanied by Miss Yuling. Not only that, just this morning, even the leader of our gang, Yin Kaishan, quietly went there and met with the people of the Song sect, seemingly making some transactions after thinking for a moment, Gui Xiliang spoke again. Ha, huh, it's interesting, but I was negligent. There are too many smart people in this world, even the top performers of our bamboo flower gang know the benefits of making friends with Song warlords. Ha, huh, that's good, with such a foundation. My action this time may be even easier. Chu Tianxiu shook her body for a moment, causing her vibrating muscles to shake off all the water droplets on her body before putting on her dry clothes. After his thick back knife was inserted into his back, he stretched lazily and walked towards the direction of Yangzhou City. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Love Crazy Song Shirdao You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Love Crazy Song Shirdao In today's world, the most famous authors are undoubtedly the four powerful aristocratic families and clans, apart from imperial power. Among these four valves, the Dugu valve holds the imperial palace control and is most trusted by the emperor. The Yuan valve has the strongest military power, while the Li valve is located in Shangxi and has the strongest foundation. However, if we talk about the most prosperous among them, we must mention the Song family gate valve among the four valves. The Song clan is the most powerful aristocratic clan in the south, and the warlord Song K, known as the world's top swordsman, is known for his heavenly sword. In the past, Yang Jian ruled the world and established the Great Sui dynasty. Due to concerns about the power of the Song ethnic group, he adopted a policy of appeasement and appointed Song K as the Duke of Xinan. Song K also knew that the situation of the southern dynasty had declined and pretended to bow down to protect his family. Among the four surnames, the other three have mixed Hu ancestry, and this fruitful southern ethnic group, which maintains its prestige, has always adhered to tradition and strictly prohibited intermarriage between its members and people outside of the Han ethnic group. Therefore, it is considered orthodox in the martial arts world. During the reign of Emperor Wenyang Jian, with the great talent and strategy that Song lacked, 
he still dared not act recklessly and concealed himself, devoting himself to cultivating concealment and avoiding major disasters. It was not until Yang Guang ascended to the throne that the Song clique became active again due to internal turmoil and external worries, as well as political corruption and rebellions. Song Kei's younger brother, Di Jian, Song Ji, is one of the most skilled swordsmen in the world. He is also famous for his intelligence and strategy in the martial arts world. He knows that the momentum of the Sui dynasty is still strong, and if he raises troops too early, he will become the first target to be attacked. Therefore, he advised his brother to temporarily postpone his rebellion against the Sui dynasty and instead engage in various profiteering activities, accumulating strength in secret. In today's martial arts world, the Bamboo Flower Gang is not considered a small force, but compared to a behemoth like Song Gang, it is far inferior. That gap is like the gap between a regular chain store in a big city and a certain cat. Not to mention that the leaders of their Bamboo Flower Gang, In Kai, and their military advisor, Xiao Lingzhou, are both intelligent people. Even if the high dot ranking officials in the gang are all wealthy, they will know the benefits of befriending the Song clique. Helmsman, during the day, our gang leader has secretly visited the heavenly immortal tower. I don't know what they said. If we go there rashly, will there be any trouble? After all, the threshold for Song's sect is too high, making friends is not easy. Gui Xiliang hesitated a bit. Huh, Xiliang, don't worry, we're lucky. We already have a way to make friends with the Song faction, and we've prepared the gifts. However, this trip is not a problem. If everything goes smoothly, then I'm not sure if I have the chance to break through my joints this time. I learned the unbeatable sword from that, heavenly sword as my teacher. Chu Tianxiu chuckled and said. After hearing these words, Gui Xiliang was immediately stunned and speechless. With the power and status of the Bamboo Flower Gang, it is easy to establish some connections with the Song family and gain some benefits. After all, even a high dot ranking and powerful family like Song family still needs their henchmen. But if you want to go further, it's impossible to learn swordsmanship from the subordinates of Song K, who never accepts apprentices and doesn't even pass on his own swordsmanship to his son. It's even harder than reaching heaven. Moreover, in recent days, Chu Tianxiu has almost always been inside the helm, and everything he does on a daily basis is in his eyes. So where did he get the connections and gifts? For a moment, Gui Xiliang became confused. If he had not known that his boss had always been clever and did not engage in unprepared battles, he would have worried that Chu Tianxiu's trip was to embarrass himself. Wrapped around his waist for 100,000 guan, he rode a crane down to Yangzhou. From Yangzhou, heading east to the Yangtze River, one can sail to Japan, Ryukyu, and Southeast Asia. It is the most important port for overseas trade between the Central Plains and other overseas countries. Since ancient times, Yangzhou has been one of the most prosperous and prosperous cities in the world. With the development of commerce, the brothel industry here has become very prosperous, known as Yangzhou's lean horse, with a posture of blooming and colorful flowers competing for beauty. Among the many famous Yangzhou brothels, Tianxian Tower is one of the best. This is not only because that Duan is charming, graceful, and famous, but also because there are countless influential figures who want to become her guests. Yuling, who can almost be called the number one flower leader in Yangzhou, lives here. It is also because of its elegant decoration and service to Chu, making it a top leisure destination in the Yangzhou region. Few people know that this Yuling girl seems to be still receiving guests, but secretly she is already the forbidden territory of Yin Kaishan, the leader of the Bamboo Flower Gang. She can be considered as Yin Kaishan's unnamed continuation wife who lost her wife in her early years, and this heavenly immortal tower is already a property under the jurisdiction of the Bamboo Flower Gang. Chu Tianxiu led Gui Xiliang into this heavenly immortal tower. The guests who opened the door, seeing him and the six wind bamboo embroidered on his collar, dared not slack off and eagerly invited Chu Tianxiu inside. Yo, Grandpa Chu, what kind of wind? 
who brought you here? Hurry up, please come in. Today, there happened to be a new girl named Lu Wan, who is very fair and beautiful. I will bring her to serve you now. Bamboo branches determine one's identity. The internal structure of the Bamboo Blossom Gang is rigorous, with a strict order of top and bottom. Therefore, the green bamboo embroidered on the collar of the gang members has strict standards. The leader of the gang is Ten Bamboo, followed by the leader, deputy leader, helmsman, and incense leader. The number of bamboo gradually decreases, making people recognize his identity at a glance. More importantly, since Chu Tianxiu became a disciple of Shen Bei Tang, his temperament has become quite extravagant. Although he is not a regular visitor to this Tianxiang Tower, he likes to come here to taste tea every time there is a big event, and he is familiar with the guests here. I have some business here, so please keep it for me for now until later. I know that a distinguished guest from the Bamboo Flower Gang has come to this heavenly immortal tower today, so I want to see you, but could you please tell Miss Yuling? Master Chu, this matter is a bit difficult to handle. This distinguished guest has been on a busy journey and may have already rested. If you disturb him recklessly, I'm afraid I'll take responsibility. The guest, however, showed a displeased expression and said so. Just send a message saying that my two brothers once mistakenly entered the ship of the Song sect and then disappeared, but I want to inquire about some information from the Song sect. As for whether the Song sect people have seen me or not, just report back, Chu Tianxiu insisted the guest had a low status and was difficult to refuse, so he hurriedly walked upstairs and reported the news to Miss Yuling from the Heavenly Immortal Tower. Not long after, the guest received news that it was the few distinguished guests who invited Chu Tianxiu upstairs. Chu Tianxiu approached Song Quan today. There were some things that were difficult for others to know, so at his command, he handed over the obviously anxious Gui Xiliang to the madam here, asking her to arrange for someone to help him rest. He then walked alone to the second floor and entered the elegant room inside the room, there were two men and two women sitting at a square table, seemingly discussing something. Sitting on the throne was a middle-aged handsome man in his forties, with white hair and a beautiful silver beard, but without any signs of aging. He was born elegant and majestic, exuding a grand demeanor. Beside him sat a young and beautiful woman with fair skin, a graceful figure, and a very close relationship with the middle-aged handsome man's affectionate behavior. Across from the middle-aged handsome man sat a handsome and elegant young man. Although he was dressed as a scholar, he had no weak demeanor and instead gave people a feeling of softness and ease. Madam, several distinguished guests. However, it was Chu who was presumptuous this time. I have two brothers who lost contact with me a few days ago due to some reasons. I heard that before they went missing, they were with several distinguished guests, so a certain family had to come here to inquire about the news. After Chu Tianxiu entered the room, he first bowed his hand and apologized, then came straight to the point with sincere words. When bandits go to other mountains to worship the mountain gate, they also need to find a reasonable starting point as a ladder, not to mention that Chu Tianxiu is looking for a high dot ranking and powerful official like Song Valve. Fortunately, the two good brothers in our family, aside from their other abilities, have the greatest ability to cause trouble in the world. A few days ago, he and his wife inexplicably recognized Fu Junjun, the daughter of Goguryeo Rakshasa, as their adoptive mother. However, this Goguryeo Rakshasa woman happened to be the dream lover of Song Shidao the son of the Song dynasty. With such twists and turns, Chu Tianxiu and Song dynasty were able to establish a relationship, which was a great help to him. As for the fact that Fu Junjun has already died, what can he do? Leaving aside whether the news of Fu Junjun's death has been spread or not, even if it does, at certain times, the dead can be more effective than the living. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Talking Big. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 6 Talking Big The Top Grade Has No Poor Scholar, 
and the bottom grade has no noble clan if one does not immerse themselves in this era and do not understand it, then future generations will not understand what this sentence means, let alone what the four great gates standing at the top of all aristocratic families represent. I would never know why Chu Tianxiu had to hibernate in the bamboo flower gang in Yangzhou City for so long, until he had achieved success in martial arts, before daring to go out and do some business. The four major powers, namely the Li, Dugu, Yuan, and Song factions, are not simply four political or military families, but rather four behemoths that integrate the identities of political, military, and financial elites. At the grassroots level of the economy, they had already monopolized most of the profitable business in the Central Plains and the Great Sui Dynasty, which was even more terrifying than the later generations of certain treasures and certain geese. Not to mention, they themselves were the sharers of the core power of the Sui Dynasty, with great power in the government and military. If it weren't for the internal discord among the four major sects, who were enemies of each other, they wouldn't have been able to unite together. Otherwise, after they joined forces, they could have completely disregarded the Emperor of Sui and prevented his orders from leaving the palace gates. In this era, no matter what you want to do, whether you are an official, a soldier, a businessman, or a member of a gang, you can all be intricately connected to the four major warlords. If we insist on finding a force similar to the four major warlords, then perhaps only the Beiyang warlords of the Republic of China period can be compared to it. Chu Tianxiu wanted to make a difference in the southern region, so he naturally came here to pay his respects to the mountain gate. Even if he could only borrow the reputation of the Song dynasty and pull a tiger skin in the future, it could also help him avoid some big troubles in the future. After all, in this world of wandering, there are two concepts. Having a background and not having a background. Just like in Journey to the West, a four-person group for taking scriptures. If you encounter a monster, then all those with a background will be let go, and those without a background will be simply beaten to death. After hearing these words, the middle dot aged handsome men and beautiful women who were very close in posture became both eyes flickering, gesturing to each other as if they were exchanging some information and confirming something. The young handsome face had a hint of melancholy on it, and his voice spoke with a hint of sadness. Chu Helmsman, I'm sorry about this matter. I did see Xiao Ling and Xiao Zhong by Jun Zuo's side on the boat in the middle of the river, but later on, due to Yuan Huaji's pursuit, Jun Zuo had to flee with them. Song Gongzi, what you mean by Jun Jun should be Fu Jun Jun, the high disciple of the master of swordsmanship Fu Kalin, known as the Rasha Woman, right? So, the two of them should not have fallen into Yuan Huaji. If that's the case, then it can also be considered a blessing in misfortune Chu Tianxiu exclaimed with emotion. This young man is handsome and not someone else. He had a chance encounter with Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and their two adoptive mothers, Fu Junjun, and then fell deeply in love with her. Song Shidao, the young master of the Song family, was deeply saddened by her. That middle-dot-aged handsome man is the famous master of the Song dynasty, Song Lu, known for his self-created, silver dragon twisting technique. He is the uncle of the Song dynasty and one of the core figures of the Song dynasty. The woman accompanying him is named Lu Jing, who is the concubine of Song Lu Xian Na. It has to be said that the affinity between Ko Zhong and Su Xiling is truly unparalleled. In this world, not everyone is qualified to establish some friendship with Song Quan, at least Chu Tianxiu, the unknown leader of the Bamboo Flower Gang, still does not have that qualification. From a certain perspective, he can almost be regarded as climbing up like holding a pole. That's right, Junjun's attitude towards Xiaoling and Xiaozhong is very unusual, as if they are very compatible. It seems that he also wants to teach them two martial arts skills. It seems that Chu Tianxiu's words reminded Song Shidao of his first love that had just risen and disappeared, causing him to feel a bit sad and worried when he spoke. Obviously, he had already learned through some means that the Goryeo woman Fu Junjun had been seriously injured by Yuan Hua, and most likely had already passed away. Since that's the case, then I can rest assured. Song Gongzi, in a few days, 
I will go to the Jiangyin branch of the Wind Bamboo Hall to take on the position of branch helmsman. If you have any news about Shaoling Xiaozhong in the future, you can come to Jiangyin to find me, and I will do my best to help. Chu Tianxiu pretended not to know about the situation of the Goryeo woman Fu Junjun, but showed a hint of disappointment on his face. He spoke in a dull tone, just like Ko Zhong and Su Xiling were his beloved relatives and brothers. Master Chu, are you going to the Jiangyin branch of the Bamboo Flower Gang next? As far as I know, it seems that it borders the territory of Wuxi, which occupies the south of Jiangyin, and the Iron Cavalry Society of Jinling in the southwest, which may not be a good place. May I know if the Chu Helmsman is prepared? If necessary, I can assist you with one or two as Chu Tianxiu was about to bid farewell, Song Lu, who was standing beside him in this work, suddenly spoke with an elder-like demeanor, as if he really cared about Chu Tianxiu's safety. The fish have taken the bait. Chu Tianxiu's face remained unchanged, but she secretly rejoiced in her heart. If the Song Dynasty doesn't mention Jiangyin City or the Iron Cavalry Society, then it's okay, after all, there must be an explanation for the collusion of forces. When Pan Jinlian was tricked by Wang Pe, she didn't make silk for her and didn't eat at her house. So no matter how hard Ximin Qing tried, he couldn't attract Pan Jinlian. Only when Pan Jinlian went can this story continue to develop. Chu Tianxiu came to find the people of the Song clique not because he was worried about Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and the others. To put it bluntly, rather than worrying about these two brothers with amazing luck, who can be called the undead duo of Xiaoqiang, it would be better for him to worry about whether he will be slapped to death by an unknown expert in the martial arts world who suddenly appears tomorrow. However, although he had some intention of getting involved with the Song clique, in this world, the business of going to the top is never a good deal. Even if he had the intention, he could not fully reveal his intentions, otherwise his value would be devalued. From a certain perspective, the current Chu Tianxiu is simply an entrepreneur who has just started a business and is looking for angel investors. He urgently needs a large venture capital to invest in himself now. Now he needs to find ways to establish relationships, create reports and PPTs, and win over the angel investor. He must get the investor's money. However, at the same time, he cannot be too eager to invest in angel investors, otherwise it will not only greatly reduce the valuation of his own company, but also reduce the enthusiasm of investors. In fact, Chu Tianxiu was also aware that from the perspective of the silver-bearded Song Lu, the power of the Song family's aristocrats would not value themselves, nor Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and the two of them. What he was interested in was only the Yang Gong treasure, which was vaguely visible behind Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, and was known as, He Sure Bai, the treasure of Yang Gong, alongside the Jade Seal of the State of Transmission and the Sure Bai. No problem, Qing Jiao Huan Xiaoming's meteor hammer Kung Fu is indeed excellent. It is a divine skill and secret skill that ranks on the list of unique skills. I temporarily admit that I am not his opponent. But in the martial arts world, the king is against the king, the soldiers are against the soldiers, and the generals are against the generals. Ren Xiaoming has an arrogant and arrogant personality. If he wants to take action against the Bamboo Flower Gang, he will only approach our gang leader Yin Kaishan. In the Iron Cavalry Club, except for Ren Xiaoming, the rest are just a group of local chickens, tiles, and dogs. What is there to be afraid of? Chu Tianxiu said confidently with a nonchalant attitude. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Sunlang Mad Blade You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Songlang Mad Blade This Chu Tianxiu's answer was truly beyond the expectations of Silver Beard Song Lu, and inexplicably gave rise to a childish and ignorant thought in his heart. However, when he remembered Chu Tianxiu, Ko Zhong, and Su Xiling as brothers, and also remembered Yang Gong's treasure, which had already been closely connected to Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, he forcefully suppressed his displeasure and persuaded him. Brother Chu, it's not that I look down on you, 
but rather that besides Ren Xiaoming, there are also two protectors in the Iron Cavalry Society, Evil Monk and Yan Yi. The Evil Monk F.A. Nan has always been a thief in Jiang Nan dramas, committing murder, arson, rape, and plundering. Later, due to arousing public anger, he finally sought refuge with Ren Xiaoming and continued to act wickedly under his protection. Until now, no one can do anything about him. The other is Yanni Changzhen. Although she is a woman, her skills are also very good, and she is not an easy person Song Lu was willing to think so wholeheartedly for Chu Tianxiu, not because Ko Zhong and Su Xiling had such great face, but because of the face that was rumored to have fallen into the hands of the deceased Goguryeo Rakshasa woman Fu Junjun, and thus associated with these two brothers, the Yang Gong treasure. Legend has it that before Yang Su's death, he had to conquer the Qin Kingdom and all the gold and wealth he had gathered during his tenure as the Shangzhu Kingdom, as well as a large number of weapons and armor, all placed in a treasure trove. If someone obtains this treasure, they can obtain the wealth to buy half of the country, as well as weapons and equipment that can equip tens of thousands of people. In the rumors of the martial arts world, this mysterious treasure is on par with the priceless He Sure Buy, which has been used as a token by emperors throughout history. There is a saying that, he sure buy, the treasure of Duke Yang, one of the two can conquer the world. The Song Dynasty, one of the four major warlords, naturally does not lack money, but in a chaotic world, who would think that money is too much? Not to mention, if the Song Dynasty obtained the treasure of Yang Gong, it could perfectly fit the legend of the martial arts world and obtain some destiny to dominate the world. These two people are naturally not underestimated, after all, they are both disciples of the Yin Gui sect of the demon sect. They were ordered by the sect to support Qing Jiao, Ren Xiaoming and encourage him to form an alliance with Jiu Jiang Lin Shihong. But although these two people have good skills, if it's a 1.1.1.1 .1 .1 1 battle, I have confidence in taking their lives within a hundred moves after he finished speaking, Chu Tianxiu smiled slightly and spoke arrogantly in an extremely calm tone. As soon as these words were spoken, Song Lu, who had a silver beard, suddenly froze, his face slightly changed, and a hint of disbelief appeared in his eyes. The news that the evil monk and the Yanni are from the Yin Gui sect is not surprising. According to the intelligence ability of the Song clique, Song Lu naturally had guesses about this for a long time. However, the purpose of sending these two people from the Yin Kuei sect is a top secret that even the intelligence ability of the Song clique cannot detect. Song Lu's heart was clear that if what Chu Tianxiu said was true, there was a possibility of Lin Shihong and Tai Chi Hui Ren Xiaoming colluding with each other in Jiujiang, which would inevitably be a major event affecting the direction of the entire southern power. He couldn't help but urgently ask. Master Chu, are you serious about this? You can't joke about such a thing. Of course it's not a joke. Although the Bamboo Blossom sect is not as wealthy and powerful as the Song Dynasty, it still has some connections. The heroes of the world are not all among the aristocratic, Buddhist, and demonic sections. Chu Tianxiu's eyes sparkled with a soft and resolute voice. Brother Chu, third uncle didn't mean that. It's just that your news is a bit unbelievable. Song Shidao felt that the atmosphere at this moment seemed a bit awkward, so he quickly spoke up to persuade him. But what Song Shidao didn't expect was that after listening to his words, Chu Tianxiu frowned, like a competitive young man, and touched the thick back sword behind him, saying with a stern expression. Song Gongzi, I heard that you are the most outstanding son of the Song family in this generation, the outstanding young generation. Even compared to the leader of the Iron Cavalry Club, Qingjiao, Ren Xiaoming, I'm afraid it's not too much to give up. Why don't we just have a fight and prove my abilities whether it's talking about Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, trying to strengthen their relationship, or adding a bit of mystery to the Yin Kue sect just mentioned, it's just the initial groundwork to find a suitable path. The door worship sticker that he truly wanted to give to Song Valve was not actually those empty things, but his six-year hard work in swordsmanship, which was his real strength. In a chaotic world, the strong are respected. A top martial arts expert often has an incredibly powerful deterrent power. 
The reason why Goguryeo was able to remain undefeated in three battles against the Great Sway was largely due to the internal reasons of the Great Sway, as well as the presence of Fu Kalin, the E Sword Master. The Turks were able to proclaim themselves emperor on the grasslands and view the central plains as having nothing, largely due to the presence of the martial lord by Xian, who made the Turks regard it as a human myth and unite as one under the banner of this human saint. A powerful warrior, ranging from being able to determine the survival of a gang to being able to influence the direction of a dynasty. The Tiela people were originally ambitious and wanted to challenge the status of the Turkic grassland hegemon, but after their spiritual symbol, Flying Eagle, Chu Ao was defeated by Bai Xian, the Tiela people's spirit and spirit were immediately interrupted, losing their original ambition. On the contrary, since the emergence of Fu Qian, a genius warrior, Tuyuhan immediately had the ambition to compete with the Tiela people. What Chu Tianxiu truly wants to show to Song Quan this time is his power. His goal is only to let the people of Song Valve know that there is a newly born young master in the Bamboo Flower Gang. As for other things, there is no need for him to say it with his mouth. Song Valve, such a high dot ranking and influential person, will naturally arrange everything clearly and clearly. The higher you stand, the more you know the value of talent. A Grand Song Dynasty aristocrat naturally knows how to deal with a young master with potential, strength, and the ability to be recruited. All right, Chu Helmsman, let me teach you your skills. However, your swords are silent, so it's better for us to keep hitting them. Song Shirdao was momentarily stunned, then showed a bitter smile. He stood up from his chair, drew his long sword from his waist, and spoke softly. This is natural, but there should be no regrets when wielding the sword. Even if my strength is really weak and I was injured by Prince Song, it's okay. Chu Tianxiu saw that Song Shirdao was ready, so she gently lifted the thick back big sword in her hand, leveled it with her eyebrows, and suddenly swung it down, fiercely cutting in the direction of Song Shirdao. Under the roar of the thick back knife, there was a mix of magnificent wind sounds. The howling sound was dull and icy, making people involuntarily associate it with the stirring sound of waves when the sea was raging. Good swordsmanship. Song Shirdao walked lightly with his sword, holding the blade against the thick back of the large sword. His body flickered slightly, and after missing this sword, he couldn't help but say with emotion. Whether there is an expert or not, one can know by making a move. With Song Shirdao's gentlemanly and jade-like temperament, he certainly wouldn't underestimate Chu Tianxiu. However, if he really values Chu Tianxiu, it is just a lie. At this moment, after Song Shirdao truly witnessed Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship, it was only then that he truly understood Chu Tianxiu. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Heavenly Price Trading. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Heavenly Price Trading Its sword is like a great river. Its momentum is like a surging tide. Chu Tianxiu did not speak, but tightened his muscles all over, causing the sword in his hand to strike toward Song Shirdao with a grand momentum. The continuous cutting force was like waves of massive tsunamis, fiercely rushing toward Song Shirdao, intending to completely destroy and destroy all his defensive forces. His swordsmanship is very simple, and can even be described as simple. Almost every time he swings his sword, the angle is the same, unlike the ever-dot-changing eerie swordsmanship of ordinary people in the martial arts world. This swordsmanship is like a beginner practicing swordsmanship, as if even ordinary people who do not understand martial arts can calmly defend themselves. If there is any merit in his swordsmanship, it is only that when he swings his sword, it is incredibly smooth, like flowing clouds and water. But it was this unappealing swordsmanship that plunged Song Shirdao into a fierce battle, almost like a fierce general falling into the river in a hundred battles, even with the power of a thousand Jun, he could only drift with the flow. At the beginning of the few attacks, Song Shirdao handled them quite appropriately, with a feeling of lifting weights lightly. Even when he made a move, there seemed to be a hint of guidance hidden. But after receiving Chu Tianxiu's ten consecutive swords, 
he found that his sword-wielding hands were trembling with the heavy sword force, which made him feel a little uneasy. At this moment, he finally sensed the roar of Chu Tianxiu's seemingly powerful sword attack, inexplicably mixed with a wonderful shaking force, constantly washing away his body and disintegrating the power inside. Song Shidao was not good at connecting with his heart, so he quickly used his true qi to condense it in his sword and fight against the shaking force, but he did not reverse much of his decline. The pressure that Chu Tianxiu brought him suddenly became heavier with each knife, and each knife was even stronger than the previous one. When Chu Tianxiu swung his thirtieth knife, it made him feel like he was trapped in a quagmire. That feeling was like a small boat caught in a tsunami, no matter how hard it struggled, it couldn't resist the immensely vast sea. Oh no! Song Shidao has a deep and extensive knowledge of martial arts in the martial arts world. He fully understands that although Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship is not comparable to his father's unparalleled and unwavering supreme sword, it is also a unique and ingenious sword technique. Chu Tianxiu seems to have the same posture every time he swings his sword, but in fact, the strength and strength contained in his internal strength are different, and he has a very lingering power. If he had put in all his effort from the beginning, he would have a seven or eight point confidence in using his own vision and cultivation to forcefully break through Chu Tianxiu's extraordinary swordsmanship. However, his initial reserved demeanor prevented him from identifying Chu Tianxiu's weaknesses in a timely manner. Instead, he stepped directly into Chu Tianxiu's rhythm, which led him into an absolute predicament. Song Shidao naturally did not know that Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship, which imitated Yang Gua's underwater practice, was a sword technique developed by splitting under the Yangtze River. In the vast Yangtze River, although the surface of the river may seem sluggish, in reality, the direction of the turbulent water flow at the bottom of the river is unpredictable, with countless hidden currents with different directions and forces. He constantly cleaves the river in waves, and in the process of fighting against those undercurrents, he involuntarily incorporates the characteristics of river turbulence into his swordsmanship, making it contain such wonderful characteristics. Brother Chu, stop. I really lost this time. It seems that this time, I am blind. After Song Shidao exerted all his strength to connect Chu Tianxiu with a hundred and seven swords, he realized that his predicament had become deeper and deeper. He felt his body and bones being repeatedly washed away by an inexplicable strange soft force, giving him a feeling of a limp waist. He realized that even if he continued to fight, he would not be able to break Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship. So, when he took Chu Tianxiu's 108 swords, he sold a loophole and walked back continuously, arched his hands together, held the sword down, and said with a bitter smile. As a son of a noble family, Song Shidao has his own demeanor. If he loses, he will lose, and if he wins, he will win. He can still afford to lose. Upon hearing this, Chu Tianxiu swung his sword and slashed it in the air, then withdrew his sword from its sheath without any sense of complacency. Brother Song, you are humble. Although you did fall into a disadvantage just now, it was only because you were not familiar with my swordsmanship and energy. Moreover, Brother Song, you have a deep family background and profound internal strength, which cannot be compared to me, a wild person. If you really continue to fight, I'm afraid Brother Song only needs to take on one or two hundred more swords from me, and it's time for you to turn defeat into victory. Chu Tianxiu's words are not humble words, but heartfelt words. At that moment, he relied on his unique swordsmanship and the advantage he had just taken, which indeed gave him a strong advantage in the previous confrontation. But from another perspective, this dominant behavior is actually the result of him forcibly dragging Song Shidao into his best rhythm, in order to harm others. But what's worse is that although Chu Tianxiu's capital is good, it can't compare to Song Shidao, who has been practicing top-notch inner sect mental techniques since childhood and is a noble and influential son. If it weren't for Song Shidao admitting defeat first, he wouldn't need to launch any counterattacks. He just needed to drag on until Chu Tianxiu's true energy was exhausted, and naturally he would have won. Huh, you two don't need to be humble anymore. This time we'll have a draw. However, Brother Chu's swordsmanship is truly extraordinary. 
even if my brother sees him, he might be delighted to see Lai Exian. Song Lu, the silver beard, on the side, reached out and stroked his beard, with a smile on his face, and laughed heartily. Silver beard Song Lu was naturally unwilling to admit that the Song Shi Dao had just been defeated, after all, Song Shi Dao was the son of Song Ke and the successor of the Song family, representing the facade of the Song family. If the news of his defeat spreads, regardless of the reason, it will hurt the face of the Song family. But if this battle is considered a draw between the two, then it doesn't matter much. If it's a tie, then it's a tie. Chu Tianxiu naturally has no objection to this result. After all, he did not seek out the Song clique to determine the winner in the competition. At that moment, he revealed his swordsmanship and strength, which was already enough. The next thing will depend on what the giant Song Valve will think and do. Brother Chu, you have such strong swordsmanship. Would you be willing to join our Song sect? Compared to just now, Song Lu's voice became much more enthusiastic. Obviously, with Chu Tianxiu's recent performance, he had already recognized his strength and planned to win him over. Although Chu Tianxiu's victory just now was somewhat clever, overall, he was also a top dot notch expert. There are not many strong individuals with this level of strength, even among the powerful Song warlords. I understand the kindness of Senior Song. However, my master is the leader of the Wind Bamboo Hall of the Bamboo Flower Gang. He is as kind to me as mountains, but he dare not speak lightly about leaving the gang, Chu Tianxiu retorted. This is a bit regrettable. If any of you have a change of heart, you can come to my Song sect. Upon hearing this, Song Lu was not particularly disappointed. Obviously, he was just holding an attitude of hitting with or without dates. At this time, the Song dynasty had a plethora of talented people, and the leader Song Ke was known as the number one sword in the world, with strength comparable to the legendary three great masters. Therefore, there was no need to adopt an attitude of looking at the thatched cottage for one or two talents. Next, Song Lu changed his language and brought the topic to the current world of martial arts. He told stories about major gangs such as the Iron Cavalry Club, the Water Conservancy Club, and the Haisha Gang, which were among the eight or ten sects of the Bamboo Flower Gang. He also shared some interesting stories about martial arts and brought their relationships closer. Chu Tianxiu knew some of the news that Song Lu said, while others didn't, so he tilted his ears from the beginning and carefully digested the information. Although he has been paying great attention to intelligence since entering this world, he even secretly established a small intelligence organization in Yangzhou, controlled by his three orphans, Chu Ji, Chu Liang, and Chu Qian, whom he adopted. However, with the resources and channels at Chu Tianxiu's disposal, being able to gather dozens of core personnel and fully grasp the intelligence information within Yangzhou City is already considered the pinnacle. Naturally, it is impossible to grasp the information of the entire world, let alone some internal information that only Song warlords know. But it was unclear whether it was intentional or unintentional, as Song and Lu talked, the topic inexplicably turned back to Fu Junjun, a Goryeo woman from the Rakshasa tribe, and even brought the news to the hottest topic in the world today. The Treasure of Yang Gong End of this chapter Chapter 9 10,000 Gold Seeking Heaven Blade You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 9 10,000 Gold Seeking Heaven Blade The show meet has finally arrived. The reason why Song Shidao cared about Ko Zhong, Su Xiling, and the two of them was because he really liked Fu Junjun so much that he fell in love with his family and had a very simple idea. Silver Beard, Song Lu also cared about Ko Zhong and Su Xiling, and their purpose was not so simple. He's doing it for nothing else, it's the thing that everyone in the world covets, Yang Gong's treasure. There are rumors that the Goryeo Raksha woman pawned a famous Sui dynasty founding general Shi Wansui's personal precious jade at a pawn shop a few days ago. There are also rumors that the jade pendant was later collected by Yang Su and placed in Yang Gong's treasure trove. Brother Chu, 
those two brothers are currently involved with the Goryeo Rakshasa woman, and they may be in a lot of trouble in the future, Senior Song's words are accurate, as rumored in the Eternal Life Technique. Dot. It is written by the ancient immortal Guang Chengzi, which hides the secret of immortality. However, it is only a vague legend. Except for Yang Guang, the emperor who wants immortality, and the Yuan sect with ulterior motives, everyone may care about a strange Taoist classic. However, if Yang Gong gets involved with this treasure, it will be coveted by the whole world, and there may be no peace in the future Chu Tianxiu deliberately clicked on the picture and said with a bitter smile. Not bad, that's right. Brother Chu, if you get in touch with your two little brothers in the future, please advise them to come and stay with me, Song Vao, for a period of time. In this Central Plains world, I'm afraid Song Vao also has some ability to protect them. Song Lu's words were indeed quite pleasant, but Chu Tianxiu also understood the meaning behind his words. This wise man from the Song dynasty cannot avoid vulgarity, and he is afraid that he has also fallen in love with the legendary Yang Gong treasure. Even if Song Lu himself does not covet that legendary treasure, he must consider it for the entire Song dynasty. If necessary, that's good. The greatest resource that Chu Tianxiu possesses is that he has long known the location of this treasure trove from the original plot, which is almost the only unowned item he possesses, the unowned treasure. Unfortunately, he knew the location of the treasure trove, but he couldn't unlock the mechanisms arranged inside and outside Yang Gong's treasure trove, making it easy to see but difficult to retrieve. If it weren't for learning Lu Miaozi's secret mechanism techniques or corresponding treasure maps like Ko Zhong and Su Xiling in the original plot, then with the arrangement of the mechanism in that treasure trove, it could be said that whoever goes will die. The most crucial point is that there is indeed a massive amount of money, weapons, and various rare treasures in that treasure trove, but those things do not have much attraction for Chu Tianxiu himself. His nine-dot-year compulsory education in his previous life was never for nothing. He wants money, there are plenty of ways. Oh, Senior Song, does it mean that the Song family also needs Yang Gong's treasure trove? If the Song family really wants it, then I can make a deal with the Song family. After realizing Song Lu's greed, Chu Tianxiu couldn't help but feel a little secretly happy. She thought she finally had a chance to sell this big bundle for a good price, so she deliberately lowered her voice and said in a slightly mysterious tone. Song Lu's gaze narrowed slightly, and a hint of surprise and shock appeared on his face. However, he could vaguely hear the hidden lines in Chu Tianxiu's words, but he couldn't believe them. The Song dynasty was not short of money, but the He Shi Bai and Yang Gong's treasure, both of which could conquer the world, have long been a rumor deeply rooted in people. This made me, the Song dynasty, also have some desire to seek a share of righteousness. Song Lu said solemnly. I see, but I know now. Senior Song, young Master Song, I won't hide it from you either. In fact, a few days ago, I also got some clues about Yang Gong's treasure and roughly determined its location, but I don't know if Song Valve needs it or not Chu Tianxiu spoke a seemingly calm tone and made a shocking statement. This is true. Song Lu's composure was even more astonishing, and he couldn't help but stand up from the chair in an instant and ask. Where can we fake this kind of thing? As long as we verify it a bit, it will naturally reveal its true form, Chu Tianxiu answered. Treasures are something that cannot be fake. If there is, it means there is, if there is no, it means there is no, it is easy to verify. There are indeed fraudsters in this world, but there are no fraudsters who would create such a scam that can be easily solved. Master Chu, but I don't know what you want for the news of this treasure. Song Lu is truly an old martial artist. After being severely intimidated by this news, he was able to quickly regain his composure and start bargaining. To be honest, my goal is only one, and that is, I hope to inform the Song Valve about the news about Yang Gong's treasure trove, so that I can obtain a one-month Tiandao sword technique from the Song Valve master of your esteemed Valve. Chu Tianxiu said decisively. This is a transaction, a real big deal. 
It is a matter of personal opinion which one is more precious, the information of Yang Gong's treasure or the technique of the Heavenly Sword Song Quebec. Generally speaking, even 99% of people in the martial arts world would not think that an opportunity to learn swordsmanship could be worth such a high price. In Chu Tianxiu's eyes, the swordsmanship of the Heavenly Blade was absolutely worth it. He doesn't have much cash at the moment, but that doesn't mean he's short of money. If he only wants money, then he doesn't need to worry about anything. As long as he works hard in business for a few years and takes out big weapons such as salt, soap, and glass, he can naturally earn several times more money than the hidden gold in Yang Gong's treasure trove. But in this era where various factions are tied up and warlords are divided, the role that money can play is really limited, and it cannot even be used to save one's own small life if there is no power and only money, then even the richest person is just a fat pig waiting to be slaughtered. He values strength more than money. In the past six years, apart from putting in a lot of effort to screen out some sensible orphans from the streets and train them, Chu Tianxiu specially invited people to teach them writing, teach them martial arts, and cultivate their abilities with care, making them his own legitimate followers. More than 80% of his time and energy were spent on practicing martial arts. There are some accounts that everyone knows without counting. Whether it is now or in the future, the world today will be an era where martial arts are paramount. If one does not have a background in social circles, then only profound martial arts skills are the greatest personal foundation and guarantee. Otherwise, he would not be willing to endure loneliness, hibernate for several years without moving, willingly endure day and night under the big river, practicing diligently without stopping. Unfortunately, his talent for martial arts is good, his methods of practice are also appropriate, and he works hard enough, but ultimately lacks some foundation. If we only rely on our own closed-door thinking, whether we can achieve the level of a master in twenty years will also be an unknown number. So learning from Song K, the Heavenly Knife, to learn his invincible Heavenly Knife technique, was his best choice. With this knife technique, Chu Tianxiu seemed to have filled the gap of the wooden barrel. Not only was his master within reach, but even if he had enough luck, he could stand at the top of the world in the future and become a top-notch expert like Song Quebec. Do you want to learn swordsmanship from my father? If there are any other conditions, I can agree to them all at once. But in this matter, I cannot do it. Chu Tianxiu's conditions may seem unexpected, but they are entirely reasonable. In today's Song family, the only temptation that can rival the value of Yang Gong's treasure is the lack of learning swords from Song. But Song K is the father of Song Shirdao and also the leader of the Song clique. Neither Song Shirdao nor Song Lu can be this leader, so Song Shirdao's face showed a bitter smile and he said so. It doesn't matter. All I need is an opportunity. Even if your excellency, Tian Dao, finds my talent dull in the future and doesn't want to pass on my swordsmanship, then I will accept it. After Chu Tianxiu casually said these words, he walked up to Song Shirdao and carefully lowered his voice by three points. He spoke in a voice that only Song Shirdao could hear. The entrance to Yang Gong's treasure trove is in a sweet well in the courtyard of the Duga sect on the edge of Chang'an Wulo Temple. However, the treasure trove was made by the number one craftsman in the world, Lu Miaozi, and there are numerous secret mechanisms inside. Without the help of the mechanism master to crack it, it is inevitable that whoever goes will die. Song Gongzi must be careful and remember. Chu Tianxiu didn't cover up anything, just told Song Shirdao the news so straightforwardly, without worrying whether Song Shirdao would turn his back and be ruthless, taking the news and not recognizing anyone. Brother Chu is indeed grand. I really don't know. If my father refuses your request, then I don't even know how to handle myself. This straightforward approach, which completely disregarded Yang Gong's treasure, directly shocked Song Shirdao, he originally thought that even if Chu Tianxiu was obsessed with swords, he could even sacrifice Yang Gong's treasure. But for such a big deal, Chu Tianxiu had to hide the news to death, not to see rabbits or scatter eagles. But I didn't expect Chu Tianxiu to be so bold. 
She told him the news directly and couldn't help but sigh before speaking up. Chu Tianxiu smiled but remained silent, without any explanation. Chu Tianxiu is well aware of what kind of character Tian Dao Song Ke is. In this world, only he and the world.Renowned evil king Shi Zhishuan can be regarded as the most admired heroes of Chu Tianxiu. If Chu Tianxiu really didn't see the rabbit and didn't scatter the eagle, he would have to make Song Ke agree to give him the news of Yang Gong's treasure trove. So, how that proud man would choose would be at most half of it. But now that Song Kaixian has received that news, that flawless man will definitely not take advantage of Chu Tianxiu and will definitely do his best to teach him. This can also be considered a small calculation in Chu Tianxiu's heart. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 Farewell to Yangzhou. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Farewell to Yangzhou A gentleman can be deceived in a way. Chu Tianxiu's thoughts are not clear to Song Shidao. He only saw that Chu Tianxiu handed over the Yang Gong treasure, which was rumored to be, he sure by, Yang Gong's treasure, and one of them could conquer the world, to the Song clique without any guarantee. So, when Song Shidao was unaware of Chu Tianxiu's calculations, he naturally felt guilty towards him. So much so that after Chu Tianxiu proposed to continue fighting with him a few times and hone his own swordsmanship, he readily agreed. Song Shidao was a good person, a true good person, to the extent that even after Chu Tianxiu involuntarily regarded him as a useful tool, he remained a good person without getting angry. Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship was largely achieved by chopping through the thousands of miles of Yangtze River, while a small portion was achieved through fighting in the martial arts world. The status of the bamboo flower gang in the martial arts world is not high, and the situation is not large, which makes the opponent's Chu Tianxiu encounters in battles in the martial arts world not particularly strong. Over the years, although Chu Tianxiu has gained a lot of practical experience in combat, her experience in battling real martial arts experts is extremely lacking. So, Song Shidao, who not only had profound martial arts skills but also had an extremely good temper, became the most ideal martial arts companion for Chu Tianxiu. During the original World War I, Song Shidao had already understood the characteristics of Chu Tianxiu's swordsmanship, which resulted in Chu Tianxiu losing very miserably in his second confrontation with him. From the very beginning, under the attack of Song Shidao's fierce swordsmanship, which focused on offense and defense, Chu Tianxiu was unable to fully utilize his own swordsmanship advantages and fell into a predicament. He only accepted the fifteen sword moves of Song Shidao and had to admit defeat. In the second encounter, Chu Tianxiu combined his previous disastrous defeat and changed his mindset. Although he was unable to win, he at least supported twenty more swords than last time. The third time the fourth time in the next half month, Chu Tianxiu did not care if he had to go to Jiangyin County as soon as possible to take over the position of the branch helmsman, or did he care about the plans he had set in his mind. He only fought and practiced swordsmanship with Song Shidao every day, using this proud son of the Song clique as a sharpening stone to sharpen his swordsmanship even more fiercely and fiercely. It has to be said that Song Shidao is really a good-tempered person. Even though Chu Tianxiu's intention to take advantage is obvious, he still conscientiously does his job as a tool person, and even deliberately lowers his own strength when making a move, directly giving Chu Tianxiu a move. It has to be said that Prince Song is really a good person. After Chu Tianxiu silently issued a good person card to Song Shidao, his momentum grew stronger day by day, and his originally rough and rustic swordsmanship gradually became more perfect. That feeling was like an excellent jade craftsman starting to grind the embryo of the jade in his hand, carving it more and more magnificent, and finally achieving the appearance of a perfect jade artifact. Unfortunately, it's too unfortunate. Unfortunately, Song Shidao came to the imperial capital of Yangzhou only to manage his family's business and cannot stay for too long. Chu Tianxiu himself also had to hurry to Jiangyin County to establish his own business and cope with the upcoming chaotic times. 
Otherwise, Chu Tianxiu really wanted to hold on to Song Shidao tightly and let him accompany him to practice swordsmanship for six months and eight months, so that his swordsmanship could truly go further and explore the realm of the legendary Dao Master. But there is always a feast that never ends. On the eighth day, Chu Tianxiu had to bid farewell to Song Shi. Song Shidao boarded Song's three-masted ship and headed towards Lingnan, while he also had to board the large merchant ship of six hundred stones that he had just obtained from the gang, relying on the face of his master Shen Beitang. He set off from Yangzhou port and slowly sailed south along the Yangtze River. Jinjin, go back, don't look anymore. Go back to the cabin. The river is windy and the air is cool, be careful not to feel the wind. Chu Tianxiu stood on the broad deck of the ship, feeling the cool breeze on the river. She took off her coat and draped it over a delicate and graceful weak beauty, speaking softly. Well, young master, it's okay. It's just my first time leaving Yangzhou, and I'm a bit reluctant. Her eyebrows furrowed lightly, and a hint of melancholy appeared on her face. Obviously, she still feels a bit reluctant about leaving her hometown. Unlike Lu Jing, the concubine of Song and Lu, the gorgeous girl Yuling from the heavenly immortal tower has a gentle beauty, with a warm and transparent temperament all over her body. She is as gentle as the drizzle in the water town of Jiangnan, and has a very eye-dot catching beauty. Ha, huh, it's okay, Jinjin. We're leaving Yangzhou this time, it's just a temporary farewell. In two years' time, I will still come back to Yangzhou city. Chu Tianxiu understood her feelings and gently patted her back, comforting her. Wei Zhenzhen is the little concubine married by Old Feng, who sells steamed buns in the original work. She often helps Ko Zhong and Su Xiling to prevent them from freezing to death and starving to death. However, in this life, because Chu Tianxiu had already spent money to redeem this poor little woman and treat her as her own maid, responsible for taking care of her daily life, she did not marry Old Feng, who sold meat buns, but avoided some misfortunes. There is another little woman by his side, not to mention anything else, who can at least help him manage his life in an orderly manner, making his life very refined. It has to be said that Chu Tianxiu was able to enjoy these days in classical society, and the existence of chastity accounted for at least 8% of the credit. Farewell to one's hometown is always painful. Especially in this era, every parting may be a lifelong absence, perhaps because women are somewhat sentimental. Even though the river breeze was cold at this moment, Wei Zhenzhen still refused to go down into the cabin and silently watched as the ship slowly moved away from Yangzhou. Chu Tianxiu advised a few words, but found that Wei Zhenzhen was still a bit reluctant, so he stopped persuading. In his early years, he had quietly passed on some internal mental skills to Wei Zhenzhen, practicing and cultivating her body in private, so that her body did not appear so weak. It was not a big deal to blow the river wind for a while, and just now he was just a little heartbroken. Accompanied by Wei Zhenzhen's gaze, Chu Tianxiu's eyes also looked towards Yangzhou like eagles and wolves. However, compared to Wei Zhenzhen's sorrowful spring and autumn, what he saw in his eyes was very different. In his eyes, there was a faint hint of warmth and eagerness, Zhenzhen, don't worry. Although Jiangyin may not be as prosperous as Yangzhou, it is definitely a good place. After you arrive there, you will definitely fall in love with that place. Although Yangzhou is good, it is ultimately under the feet of the emperor, not my paradise. The city of Jiangyin may seem small, but it is enough to become the first fulcrum for one to dominate the world. End of this chapter